Hello and welcome. What I want to try to do here is to demonstrate how to configure and talk a little bit about uh, multi-link, PPP point-to-point -point protocol multi-link, which is an objective in ICND2, I believe. What we have here are two serial interfaces that are connected together. What multi-link does is going to treat these two uh, connections, these two serial connections, as a single high-speed link. So we're going to double the speed with it uh, through the configuration. So with that, as you can see, I'm using GNS3. Let me bring the console over here. Let me get rid of what's there. Bring the console over here. This is for R1. R1, let's see, let's get back here, which is this device. R2 has already been configured, so when I get done with any luck, this is going to work. So what we have here is serial 1, 1 and serial 1, 0 connected to the other side. So the first thing we're going to do is go in here and go into config mode, obviously, config T, and then we're going to create a multi-link interface. What we're going to do is create the multi-link interface give it an IP address, uh, assign the multi-link point-to-point protocol multi-link to the group, and then add the interfaces to the groups. The interfaces themselves will not have IP addresses. So we'll go in here and do an interface multi-link, and then we'll call it multi-link 1. We'll give it an IP address of, and this will match up with the other side, 192.168. 8.242.13255255255.0 and then let's just go ahead and give it a no shut command just in case uh, and then we'll do point to point protocol multi-link and then point to point protocol multi-link group and we have to assign it a group number we're going to be group number one the other end is group number one so now let's go to interface serial one slash zero. So the first thing we're going to do is to do a no IP address. Because we don't want, just in case there's one there, there shouldn't be. Because we don't want an IP address on the serial interfaces. That's on the uh, virtual interface, the multi-link interface. Uh, so now we will do encapsulation, PPP obviously, and then uh, say we got that, and then PPP multi-link, PPP multi-link group one, and let's go to interface serial one slash one. Go through the same thing. No IP address. Spell it right, and then we'll do encapsulation PPP, and then PPP multi-link. Multi-link, yeah, and PP multi-link, and that's a group one, it's a encapsulation and PPP multi-link, and then PPP multi-link group one. Let's show PPP multi-link here, and it says that we have these things. This actually says inactive, doesn't it? Remember, it's two, two active, zero inactive. I can't read. So we have two active links on this thing. The other end of it should be the 14 address ping 192.168.242.14. Let's see if we are communicating here and we're successfully going across the serial link. What the the PPP multi-link does is it actually shares the load here, uh, much like Ether Channel does. It breaks the packet up since part of it on one link, part of it on the other link. If we lose one of the links, we have more three, for instance, three links here or four. If we lost one of them, the uh, multi-link would still remain intact and we would just lower the speed. Now, having done all of that, what I'll do, and is if you and if you want the uh, the uh, encapsulation steps or the configuration steps, they're right here. So, 
We'll leave this here while I stall for a couple of seconds and you can then uh, go in and uh, do make any changes that you want. And this one here, obviously, this this is the wrong subnet mask. should be a 252 here instead of a 253 uh, when we do that. So with that, uh, we'll stop. That's the way that you configure uh, multi-link, point-to-point protocol multi-link on serial interfaces. They're directly connected. Uh, and that will give us a single high-speed link instead of multiple lower-speed links. I hope this has been useful and thank you for watching.